An anthology about the bad, the short-lived, and the forgotten shows and events in television history. This is It Was a Thing on TV. Before I change my mind! I give you Super Train! Oh, Episode 418, submission number 1432. Police Academy, the series. Not to be confused with Police Academy, the animated series. Even though the animated series was called Police Academy, the series. I'm confused. I'm totally confused. So I guess we could just call this Police Academy the live action series. Just to distinguish it from the animated series. Police Academy, the live action series, aired in syndication in the US and on CTV in Canada from September 22nd, 1997 to May 25th, 1998 for 26 episodes. And it also aired on TBS Superstation. And of course, that's 10 more episodes in Uncle Crocs Black, Hudson Brothers Vessel Dazzle Show, Schooled, JJ Starbuck, and the number of aired episodes of Salvage One. Is this getting annoying yet? No. Okay. So, okay, 16 plus 10. That's, I'll just say, one crack block. And let's see. What's 10 divided by 16? That would be 5 eighths. Okay, so 5 eighths of a crack block. You know how some people refer to like the span of time of something so short as a Scaramucci or a Mooch span? We should just call it a crack span for 16 episodes. We can call it a crack block. A crack block. Well, Police Academy, the live action show, got one crock block and five eighths of a crock block. So it's one and five eighths of a crock block. No, it's one and five eighths of a JJ Starbuck. That's what they call it in Canada, JJ Starbuck. One and five eighths of a JJ Starbuck? Well, no, that would be in Canada, one and five eighths of a schooled. Maybe in Mexico, it's a J.J. Starbuck. In Texas, it's one and five-eighths of a J.J. Starbuck. Well, Greg, it gets a little tricky if you go overseas to Europe because the conversion factor for J.J. Starbucks to cheap, cheap, cheaps really throws the math off. Well, it gets even weirder if you try to exchange it for a faulty towers. Oh, deep dive. Because faulty towers had 12 episodes. Somebody please play the theme music. So here we are in 1997, and the world has not had a Police Academy movie in, let's say, three years. That's right, because everyone forgets about Mission to Moscow. Everyone would love to forget Mission to Moscow, not remembering that it made Claire Forlani's career, you see. Oh yeah, and then she went to Mallrats where she delivered the greatest line ever. You know that Julie had a huge weight problem in school. She had the fattest ass. Best line delivery in a movie. 
with no Police Academy film idea on the horizon, and really nothing to tide over the fans, of which there were a few left, especially after how bad City Under Siege was. If I'm not mistaken, Mission to Moscow was a direct-to-video release. I don't remember seeing it until it was on cable. In any event, it was never released theatrically. The powers that be, namely Paul Mislansky, who produced Police Academy, the original movie, and Police Academy for Citizens on Patrol, still the best in the franchise, still felt that there was life in the franchise and stories to be told of the group of misfits out of the police academy in a city that could be your city. Thank God it's not. So, Paul Mislansky teams up with Gerald Sarnoff to develop the show as a one-hour weekly. And you will not believe the people who they got to work on this with Paul Mislansky and Gerald Sarnoff. Stephen Levitin, way before Modern Family, he was actually one of the producers on this show. Wow. And so they sold the show into syndication, and because it was produced by Warner Brothers, they also sold it into TBS, Easy Access There. And also because it was shot like many Warner Brothers productions of that time in Canada to take advantage of the tax breaks and the budgetary concerns, they also sold it to CTV. Much like the movies, Police Academy the series takes a look at the days and nights in the lives of many of the screw-ups that come into the police academy after the events of the 1984 movie set the whole franchise in motion. We have Cadet Richard Casey, who is a fun-loving serial bachelor, and a repeat offender who chose to go to the academy instead of going to jail. That makes sense. We have Dirk and Dean Tackleberry, who are nephews of Eugene Tackleberry, whom they regard in high regard. Luke Cackley, not to be confused with Luke Keekley, but Luke Cackley, who is similar to both House and Hightower. Although, let's be honest, it would be funny if Luke Keekley was on this show, even though he would have been, like, what, 10 years old or something? We have the requisite females of the cast, Cadet Anne Metford and Alicia Conchita Montoya Cervantes. And acting as the heels of the police academy, Sergeant Rusty Ledbetter, who wants to discredit Casey and his friends to get them thrown out of the academy, and his familiar, Lester Shane. He spies on Casey and his friends in an attempt to discredit them and throw them out of the academy. Overseeing the whole thing is Commandant Stuart Hefflinger, who is much like his predecessor, Commandant Eric Lassard. And tying it all back into the franchise in assorted roles around the academy is Sergeant Larvell Jones. Now, several notable people from the franchise would make a return engagement into the series, but we'll talk about them as we talk about the episodes. But right now, let's talk about who we have in the cast. Playing Cadet Casey is Matt Borlegi, who right now is Lyle the Pawn Shop Guy in Cobra Kai, but you would know him for his work on The Jeff Foxworthy Show, All My Children, and future entries, Pigsty and Party Girl. He was also in a pilot for a Married with Children spinoff called Enemies. What? 
There was a Mary for Children spinoff pilot called Enemies. It was a backdoor pilot. It was the, I believe, third to last season. It wasn't the last season. I don't think it was the second to last season. Maybe it was the second to last season. But it was a clear takeoff of Friends. Uh, and this was actually an aired episode of Married with Children. And they really mocked Friends, the whole idea of Friends. And in this episode, playing, I don't want to say a boyfriend, but somebody who was dating one of those characters. How about Alan Thick? Oh, <laughs> and mind you, Alan Thick at this point would have been probably in his late forties, early fifties, and he's dating essentially twenty-year-olds or people in their twenties. Hey, Mike, guess what? I have to honor Alan Thick. <laughs> Greg just held up a bottle of Crystal Light Mio knockoff. It's Crystal Light Strawberry Lemonade Drink Mix. Yeah, you know what? I can top you right there. <laughs> I've got packets of Crystal Light uh, Lemonade, two quarts. That's what we need to honor that Crystal Light aerobics thing that Alan Thicke did that one time. You mean the one that somebody overdubbed Taylor Swift to? What? Somebody overdubbed Taylor Swift's Shake It Off to that video. Okay, I think we're missing the big takeaway here, what we should really get out of this, which is, why the heck do Greg and Mike have Crystal Light at their desks? Because we love Alan Thicke so much, we wanted to honor him by getting Crystal Light because he hosts that aerobics competition. Whatever gets you to sleep at night. Playing Rusty Ledbetter is Rod Crawford, who wasn't in much of anything before or since this show. He played Paul McAdams in an episode of The New Adams Family, and he was a Phoenix guard on MacGyver. But yeah, this is as big as his career is ever going to get. Playing Dirk Tackleberry is Toby Proctor, who kids like me would probably remember as the first English voice of Tuxedo Mask in Sailor Moon, the first 65 episodes. But he was also in all 25 episodes of Flash Gordon from 1996, so there is that. And playing his brother, Dean Tackleberry, Jeremiah Burkett. We definitely remember him, Greg, as DJ Ken Kelly from season five of Saved by the Bell. Oh, yeah. He was also on AJ's Time Travelers as the guy who says, remember, you are strictly going back in time as visitors. You are not allowed to change alter, fold, spindle, or otherwise mutilate the course of history. But here's the thing. Toby Proctor is a white guy. <laughs> Jeremiah Burkett is a black guy. They are both nephews of Eugene Tackleberry. I'm just saying because they, they make a joke about that like in almost every episode. Anyway, Playing Annie Medford is Heather Campbell, not to be confused with Heather Ann Campbell, but Heather Campbell, who played Neely Capshaw in one episode of Baywatch. I guess we call her fake Neely Capshaw because we all remember the real Neely Capshaw. Gina Lee Nolan. Oh, yeah. But she was also, Greg, in an episode of Seinfeld. Oh, what episode of Seinfeld? Season 8, episode 5, The Package. The Package. A mysterious package arrives for Jerry. Elaine is curious about what the doctors are writing in her records. And George tries to hit on the cute girl at the one-hour photo place. Oh, yeah. Because, as we all know of certain episodes of Seinfeld, because it's in the 90s, People might not know what a one-hour photo place is in 2023. 
playing Cadet Alicia Conchita Montoya Cervantes is Christine Gonzalez, who is known as Amy on several episodes of King of Queens. Oh, King of Queens. You know we're being timely because right now, going on the internet, the hot thing on the internet is Kevin James doing that pose. Which pose is this now? Wait, really? He doesn't know the pose? I don't know the pose. Somebody's, oh, let me get Somebody's going to have to show me the pose. I got oh, it. I got 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 it. Hold on. All right. This is CNN Breaking News. Chico doesn't know the Kevin James pose. Is it necessarily the pose that we're looking for or just his face? Because his just face, the face. Think, yeah, okay. His face sells it all. And actually, I tried doing a meme the other day with his face. So I actually have a transparent image of his face. Oh, oh that's what that was? It was, it was like, mean, so, okay, was. a little bit of behind the veil here. Somebody posted a picture of family on the beach from Seinfeld with George just doing the yeah and then oh yeah I posted this in the random reels section it's the episode of Seinfeld where George looked over Mr. Kruger's picture in 1989 and George in this picture in the meme is replaced by the picture of Kevin James doing the face now I get it and you may wonder why did I do a uh, a, 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 a transparent background for that. I actually did this uh, at the entertainment of my students the other day. <laughs> Do your kids really love Kevin James and the King Queen so much? They love the meme. Again, they're hip to what's cool nowadays. They they pay attention to trends and memes and stuff and. Uh, I happened to mention a couple of days ago to the students, I said, you know, the Kevin James meme. And I showed them the picture in case they didn't know. And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, I just got this brilliant idea after seeing a certain group on Facebook. And I took the eyes and the nose and the mouth of Kevin James and put it on the blank slate. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, I'm looking at what you want. Draw a face on the cat. Then post your art in the comments. And you put Kevin James' eyes, his nose, and his lips onto the cat. I really wanted to get his whole face on the cat, except it didn't crop properly. And it would have looked kind of weird, like I just cheaply like, uh, uh, cut out uh, Kevin James's face and slapped it on a cat. So I had to work with what I had. And the students that I did that for heartily approved. So back to the cast here. Playing Luke Cackley, Tony Longo, famous Hollywood tough, known for roles in 16 Candles, Splash, Fletch, Angels in the Outfield. He played Trisket Mesmer, Greg. Mulholland Drive. And apparently one short called the Tony Longo Trilogy where he played working character actor. Aside from those and Police Academy, he was a that heavy from that thing. Sadly, no longer with us. Oh. In the role of Lester Shane, we have PJ Auckland. Yeah, he looks like a proctor. Oh my god. He was in Little Man Tate and one episode of Young Sheldon as Rene Descartes. Somebody's going to have to explain that to me, but whatever. He was also three episodes of Future Entry Grand as a character named Dustin Gladowski. Somebody named Gladowski is either going to beat you up or get beat up. And rounding out the cast as Commandant Stuart Hefflinger, Joe Flaherty. That's right. Count Floyd himself. I mean, what else can we say about Joe Flaherty? Am I the only one who watched Maniac Mansion back in the day? What else can we say? Joe Flaherty played a dentist in a season three episode of Married with Children. He was Al's dentist. 
the problem is Al didn't go to the dentist for like 40 years. He was afraid of the dentist. And uh, <laughs> Joe Flaherty's dentist character was in the middle of a divorce. And he gets a call while he's working in Al saying, that his ex-wife wants all the baseball cards and he loves the baseball cards. This is relevant to Greg and I. So this is great. No, she's not getting the baseball cards. Those are beloved. And so he gets so furious. And he, he gets all his frustration out on Al with this big drill. Al's the victim of so much stuff. His dentist was going through a divorce and right when the lawyer calls pisses off the dentist and now gets the worst end of it. But he did get a balloon and a doll. Okay. Well, that makes up for losing all his baseball cords, I guess. Now I'm talking about Al got the balloon and the doll. Oh, not the. De oh. Why would the dentist get the balloon and the doll? <laughs> I don't know. He's a dentist. He might give the balloon to a kid. I don't know. But he gives the balloon to Al. But let's not forget, Joe Flaherty was in Back to the Future 2. Because remember, Chico, he gave the note to Marty McFly from Western Union, letting him know that the doc was in the Old West. Thus setting up Back to the Future Part 3. That's right. And then we have Sergeant Larvell Jones, played by the one, the only... Michael Winslow. And what can we say about Michael Winslow? But let's just say the man is so incredibly talented doing the voice of First Nation. He should not have been in On America's Got Talent a few years ago because that would just been the game right there. Sorry. No, that would have been it. It's like, why are we even bothering here? It's Michael Winslow. You all lost. <laughs> and because this is It Was a Thing on TV, we must make mention, it is in the bylaws of this podcast that we mention that Michael Winslow was on a week's worth of episodes, at least, of the Match Game Hollywood Squares Hour. He was on many weeks of the Match Game Hollywood Squares Hour. Isn't that right, Mike? Yeah, and that was before Police Academy came out. And actually, in his last week, which would have been summerish of uh, 1984 they actually promoted him as from police academy michael winslow it's time for the match game hollywood square hour with from the movie police academy michael winslow okay so let's talk about the episodes and of course we have the expository pilot Beauty is only Academy Deep. New cadets arrive at the Metropolitan Police Academy, now under the leadership of Commandant Hefflinger. The cadets must rescue their hard-nosed instructor, Sergeant Ledbetter, after he is kidnapped by a biker gang. Now, we have some recurring, but not regular, cadets, like Cadet Leon, played by Dave Squatch Ward, who was in So Weird... Smallville, Andromeda, and Snow Dogs. It was also Santa in, and I can't believe I'm saying this, Jingle All the Way 2. Oh, that's right. There was a second one with Larry the Cable Guy and Santino from the WWE. They couldn't get Arnold and Sinbad to come back. And we also have, as Womack, Andrew Cavadas, who was in 13th Warrior, Stargate SG-1, Lego Jurassic World, Legend of Isla Nublar, and The Man in the High Castle, and Once Upon a Time. So he's done a little bit of everything, still doing a little bit of everything. Episode 2, Put Down That Nose. Worried about a former cadet threatening to assassinate the Commandant, Ledbetter undergoes a psychiatric evaluation. In the role of Kendall Jackson is Lark Miller. Now, she is another 
regular, semi-regular cadet in the Academy. And she was actually a writer on the Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson while being a character known as the Blue Swallow on iZombie. Oh, I forgot about iZombie. It was a really good show. It has the chick on ghosts on it. Rose That's McIver. what we're going to call her, the chick from Ghosts. You put some respect on Rose McIver's name, thank you very much. But playing the psychiatrist, Dr. Joyce Brothers. Oh, Dr. Joyce Brothers. Legend. And she won her $64,000 on the $64,000 question. Legit. On a boxing question. Oh, she learned all the boxers. And in a role as Sally is Emmanuel Vogier, who has spent three seasons playing Detective Jessica Angel in CSI New York. And as we've established many times in this podcast, Chico is a big fan of the CSI franchise. Damn right. Episode three, a nothing but a hound. In a training exercise staged for the cadets, Casey plays the role of a criminal on the loose. But confusion arises when a Casey lookalike escapes from prison. Meanwhile, the Tackleberries adopt a pet pig. A pet pig? Two pigs and a pig. What are the Tackleberries going to do with a pig? I don't know. Episode four. Two men and a baby. (laughs) We talked about nine cops and a baby. Now we're talking about two men and a baby. The arrival of a filmmaker filming a recruitment video gives Ledbetter the opportunity to record proof of Casey's shenanigans. Meanwhile, the Tackleberries care for an infant left at their door. Episode 5, Dead Man Talking. A photographer with incriminating evidence is brought to the Academy for protection. And District Attorney Callahan has eyes for Commandant Heflinger. Yes, Debbie Callahan is a district attorney now. Which means they got Leslie Easterbrook back for this episode. The name I'm going to mention, he's done a little bit of stuff. He was in 51 episodes of Land of the Giants as Barry Lockridge. The name I mention is Stefan Arngrim. You know the reason I'm mentioning it. His sister is Allison Arngrim from Little House on the Prairie, Nellie Olson. Ooh. Ooh. And Alice Ingram was on the Match Game Hollywood Squares hour. I think she was on the first week. She yeah, was on the she... first week. Let's not forget that first week. Hashtag Twyla had 30. Were you expecting me to say something? I was expecting you to add on to that. No, I'm taking the high road this week. Good. Good for you. <laughs> and, and the Twyla role... Littleton is a lovely lady. Yeah. In the role of Victor Mazzo, the pride and joy of Cincinnati, Ohio, Jerry Wasserman, who is Detective Fine and Watchman. He was also an iRobot, and he is currently on four episodes of Family Law and one episode of The Last of Us. Family Law on, um, of course, the uh, Victor Garber Joel State show on the CW. Oh, that's Victor Garber and Joel State. Two of my favorite Canadians. Two of my five favorite Canadians in that one show. The other three, of course, being Ryan Reynolds, Alex Trebek, rest in peace, and Shannon Tweed? Shannon Tweed. How about, no, scratch that. Scratch Shannon Tweed. I'll put Mark Messier in that top five. Uh, excuse me. If you ask me, Shannon Tweed has two of the five best Canadians ever, if you know what I mean. Good night, There's everybody. Your Twyla- There's your Twyla Littleton joke. <laughs> Screw you. I got this Mark Messier starting lineup Rangers figure I'm holding my hand right now. I see that. That's that's good. That's good. That's really good. Well, good for it you. Looks, it, it looks good, Greg. It looks good. Looks good. Looks good. Oh, yeah, Shannon Tweed's twos look good. Oh, God, Mike. 
Okay. You go back to the New Liars Club in 1988 and 1989, and don't tell me Shannon Tweed is not just absolutely adorable. You would take her home, have her meet your family, and probably do some other stuff that we can't talk about. Shannon Tweed is a treasure, and Gene Simmons is the luckiest rap bastard in the face of the earth. That sums it up. Episode 6. Mummy Dearest. Expecting a delivery of an exercise bicycle, the Commandant receives an Egyptian mummy instead. What? In an attempt to impress her strict father, Annie pretends to be a drill instructor. Playing said father, Alonzo Medford, is a man by the name of Duncan Fraser, who's been a that guy from that thing. But he was on one episode of Supergirl, so, you know, any time to mention Supergirl, I'm going to take it. Episode 7. No sweat, sweet. An over-the-hill boxer enrolls in the academy to toughen up, and Casey must find out who's been stealing the cadet's personal belongings. Playing the boxer, Ty Henderson, man by the name of Vinny Pacencia. I hope I did not screw that up. He was basically a that boxing guy from that thing. So him being in this episode as a boxer makes sense. Episode 8, All at Sea. While on a stakeout at the beach, Casey becomes involved with an attractive TV star who is kidnapped, and Annie fears she may have a curse and visits a psychic for help. The TV personality that Casey has a crush on Lay by the name of Lisa London, played by Rachel Hayward, who is seen in an episode of Greg, future entry, Turner and Hooch. Disney Plus did that show dirty, and you're not going to make me argue otherwise. Episode 9, Less is More. Casey is stalked by a woman obsessed with marrying him, just as romance is blossoming between Casey and Annie. And after a knock to the head, Lester develops multiple personality disorder. At this point, it's basically woman of the week for Casey. And in this particular case, the woman of the week is a woman by the name of Felicia, played by Heather Hansen, who was in 26 episodes of something called Really Me and 24 episodes of something else called G-Spot. I'm not even going to imagine what that's about. Oh, hell no. I don't want to think about what that's about. But the big name playing Dr. Otis P. Quackenbush, Kenneth Mars, the voice of Triton and the Little Mermaid, among other things. Episode 10. If I were a rich cop, Casey finds an ancient journal with clues to a buried treasure on Academy grounds, and Annie is upset when Casey cheats on his written assignment. Episode 11, Shopping with the Enemy. With the cancellation of Summer Vacation, Heflinger and the cadets try to get their Christmas shopping in early, but find themselves held captive by a group of inept thugs. And I should note this was the last episode before Christmas, so... Makes sense why they'd make a Christmas-themed episode. That, for some reason, takes place in the middle of summer. Well, Christmas in July. Boo. Episode 12. Luke. Warm. Annie has a secret admirer in Luke, but the feeling is not quite mutual, and the Tackleberries are hot on the trail of some missing squad cars. And we have a recurring character in Cassandra Cunningham, played by Tanya Wright, and Tanya Wright is a lovely lady who is known as the NSA advisor of the United States in Season 5 of Madam Secretary and starred for seven seasons as Kenya Jones on True Blood. And she was in nine episodes of 24, Season 1. Was also in... 11 episodes of Orange is the New Black. So yeah, she is a known entity. She is not just this throwaway lady. Episode 13. The truth ain't what it used to be. 
Police Academy Court is in session with Hefflinger as judge and Ledbetter as prosecutor. Casey is put on trial for allegedly assisting a bank robber. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Episode 14 Hoop Nightmares. In an attempt to raise money for Annie's surprise birthday party, Casey bets on the annual basketball game between the Academies and Sheriff's Cadets. Returning as Sheriff Miser, which they changed for some reason from Mauser, Art Matrano. Yep, reprising his role for Police Academy 2 and 3. Although they named him Miser for some reason instead of Mauser. Maybe it's the Canadian spelling of Mauser. Episode 15, Lend Me Your Ears. Eric Lassard comes out of retirement to fill in as Commandant while Heplinger takes a refresher course. Led better experiments with a new hair growth treatment. And of course, guess who comes back to play Eric Lassard? Punky. 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 Don't put Brandon in the microwave, Punky. Oh, God! What the hell did you just say? <laughs> Don't put Brandon in the microwave. Why would you put Brandon in the microwave? We've already Why? put Sherry in the fridge, and I had to come up with something different. Oh, God! Really? You had to go there? Going to animal abuse? Something that didn't happen on the show? I was going to say go in the corner, but I'm going to tell you, go in the refrigerator, close the door, and think about what you just did, young man. <laughs> Brandon in the microwave. I am outraged. Oh, my God. It's so horrible. I'm going to punish myself later. Episode 16, Dr. Hightower. Captain Hightower returns to the Academy to train the new cadets and to receive an award as Alumnus of the Year while also lending Casey a helping hand in tracking down an armored car thief. And we have the return of Andrew Cavadas as Womack, but we also have the return of Bubba Smith as Moses Hightower. Before we continue, I have to make an instant correction. I've been saying Hefflinger all episode long. It is Heffelfinger. 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 Okay. So now I can say this properly in episode 17. Bring me the turtle of Commandant Heffelfinger. The Commandant's pet turtle, Zeus, becomes possessed by a creature from outer space. Oh my god. Oh, God, this is so great. Hold on. The name of it is Zeus. Zeus. And he's a turtle. He's a turtle. Unfortunately, he's not voiced by Tiny Lester. But he is voiced by this guy. Mike, get ready. Dom DeLuise. Second week in a row, we've made a Dumb Dumb Louise reference. Oh my gosh. And I just listened to that episode while I was uh, getting groceries, doing my running around today. And just you mentioning Munchie on MST3K. I need to find that. Well, the MST3K channel is now airing episodes from the most recent season. So maybe you'll get to see Munchie on Pluto or sling or there's many outlets that mst3k is on i know that some of them are on demand on pluto maybe i need to do a little search later on and lester teams up with cassandra to catch a thief episode 18 karate cops the cadets are led to a couple of jewel thieves after commandant heffelfinger finds a ruby in his fortune cookie you know that there was one point in this episode where Michael Winslow did the uh, the dubbing impression. For someone who's a Shaolin monk, your kung fu is really lousy. I've been doing that for 30 years in anticipation of this moment. 
if only everybody could see you now. They'd be very proud of you. Episode 19, A Horse, of course. Horse! When Lester's new equine friend becomes kidnapped, it's up to Casey and the cadets to find and return the horse to its rightful owner. Episode 20, Mr. IQ. Lester joins a dating service using Casey's photo on his profile. Catfishing, Jones tutors the cadets on how to detect a pit pocket, and Luke becomes a game show contestant. I imagine the host of this show is Dink Bradley. Just sounds like a game showy name. Uh, he's played by Greg Rogers, who was in five episodes of Arrow as Councilman Cullens. But the only real names in this episode, there are two. Playing Charlotte Ockelman is Emmanuel Trachey. You would probably remember her as Chitara in the first Thundercats reboot. Not Thundercats War, but the first Thundercat reboot. But she is currently Lana Lang Cushing on Superman and Lois. And in the role of Myrtle Groggins, Tabitha St. Germain, known as Rarity in the My Little Pony franchise. Because Pony. Episode 21. Team Tack. Captain Tackleberry is set up for blackmail by the owner of a strip club after Tack shuts them down. Ledbetter orders Casey to help Luke lose weight. Guess who gets an appearance on this show? Oh, yes. David Graff is back as Tackleberry in this episode. Pyramid all-star David Graff. That's back. right. Respect the legend of the pyramid. Not only we have, albeit in archive footage, Colleen Campus's wife, Kathleen. Episode 22, Cadet of the Year. Heffelfinger organizes a Cadet of the Year competition to increase the number of Academy enlistments, but Ledbetter does his best to keep Casey from winning. Due to budget cuts, Commissioner Hurst is named the new Commandant. Commissioner Hurst, played by George R. Robertson, sadly died earlier this year, but he was actually in the first six Police Academy films as Chief Hurst. Oh, that's great. But because he wasn't in any of the Police Academy academies, not many people you know, remember him. Episode 23, Got Insurance. Casey tries to defend the Academy against the shady lawyer of the Academy's janitor who files a lawsuit after Luke accidentally injures him. Playing the attorney, a man by the name of Arnold Flegel, Tim Kazarinski. Although not playing the role of Sweet Chuck. Sweet Chuck's a little bit bitter. Yeah, I went there, and I'm not apologizing. Episode 24, Angel on My Back. Ledbetter meets his guardian angel who tells him to start treating his cadets with kindness or be doomed. Playing the role of the angel, a Marcus Aronius, that is his name, Robert Costanzo, who played Velocities in... Hercules, and any subsequent media afterwards, but also played Joey's dad in future entry, Joey. Episode 25, Lend Me Your Neck, penultimate episode. Annie is stalked by a mental patient who thinks he is a vampire, and a woman turns up at the academy claiming to be Heffelfinger's daughter. Playing the mental patient a guy by the name of Elwin Bixby, R. Nelson Brown, who we actually talked about on Monday as one of the ensemble casts of Police Academy, the animated series. And in the role of Jane Smith, the person claiming to be the Commandant's daughter, Leslie Hops, who was in Supernatural, John Doe, 
The Haunting Hour, and Like Mike 2? There was a Like Mike 2? There was a Like Mike 2. Did they at least get Bow Wow back for it? No. They got another no. guy. Okay, did they get any NBA stars like in the first one for this? Not that I can see, no. Oh, that's bullshit. They did get Kel Mitchell, though. Okay, that's good. Kel Mitchell. The legend. Who was recently on Celebrity Wheel of Fortune. And the final episode, episode 26, Rich No More. Let Better and the Cadets embark on a ski trip for winter break. Alice and Annie have the hots for a handsome concierge. The Tackleberries try befriending Lester, and Casey meets the love of his life, but has trouble being accepted by her father. Playing Diane in this episode, Monica Schnarr, who, last I remember, was in Buggy's Diner, which we may cover on a future episode. With James Marsden and Jim J. Bullock. Oh, wow. Emmy nominated James Marsden and Jim J. Bullock. Because let's remember, James Marsden is nominated for an Emmy for Jury Duty playing himself. And playing in a cameo role as Grumpy Man at Table, the creator of this show, Paul Maslansky. Yeah, that's the show. So, I have to ask, what happened? I think it was way too late to do a live-action version of Police Academy. Like, let's just say eight years after the last theatrical release movie in the series. I have a theory. If you look at syndication in the 80s and early 90s, you had a lot of syndicated comedies. You had Mama's Family after it got canceled uh, on NBC. She's the Sheriff ended up in syndication for a year after it got canceled on NBC. Out of This World was in syndication for three years after NBC got rid of the primetime starts at 7.30. You had Harry and the Hendersons. That was late 80s, early 90s. Did you really have true comedy in terms of a 30 minute situation comedy or comedy show in 1997 i mean honestly you had comedy shows like nightstand in 95 96 97 but really in terms of like true 30 minute sitcoms the only one that really comes to mind after like 1991 besides this the one that comes to mind is anger management because Remember, that was in syndication and also on FX at the same time. If that makes any sense. Like I said, just a theory. You know what? That is feasible. Because they were basically throwing everything at syndication and seeing what stuck. Because, if you remember, this would be the age of Deep Space Nine and Babylon 5 and... Baywatch and shows like that that are getting killer numbers in syndication and people are going outside of the traditional network model seeing, you know what? Maybe there's a point to all of this. So you see shows like VIP, Soldier of Fortune Incorporated, and Police Academy. Now the franchise as a whole was given the deep dive treatment in the documentary What an Institution, The Story of Police Academy, where anybody who was anybody, except for Tony Hawk, boo, was talking about it. I believe they briefly glossed over both the cartoon and the live-action show. But aside from that, not much is known about the show as it aired. There wasn't much in the way of reviews for the show. The show has not been legally released for home release there is a dvd out there if you know how to speak french and also episodes have popped up on youtube but if you want to watch the whole series you also have to know how to speak french because apparently it was very popular in france 
But yeah, it didn't succeed in syndication and it didn't succeed in TBS. So the fine folks at Warner's have decided we don't really see much use of a tired franchise and decided to just let it go after its season order has been exhausted. There has been talks as recently as the last couple of years of an eighth Police Academy movie, but in the 25 years, getting closer to 30 now, since it has been posited, the project has been languished in development hell, and not much is known at the time of this recording. So does anybody have anything else to add about that? Well, Police Academy, the live action series, it was one and done in syndication. And in the end, it just became a thing on TV. Well, that's going to do it for this show. Remember, if you want to listen to the 417 episodes before this one, you can hop over to It Was a Thing on TV.com. We have all the episodes, all the minisodes, all the live watches, tons of material there. And we are on Facebook at It Was a Thing on TV podcast and everywhere else at It Was a Thing on TV. Remember to subscribe to the podcast wherever fine podcasts can be streamed at Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Audible, etc., And don't forget, we are also on YouTube where you can like and subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you can be informed of all of our future uploads, including what we have in store next week. And next week is the beginning of our annual spooky season strand of shows, starting with a show that is not spooky, but did share a title with a spooky series of spooky movies and one television show that just started its third season oh yeah but also we get to see the first television appearance of maybe a possible future hall of famer of this show perhaps and then we get a mysterious invite to a country club in southern california involving robert urich and susan lucci What's there not to like? I'm sure there's something more to this story, but we'll find out more as we accept an invitation to HE Double Hockey Sticks next week, right here on It Was a Thing on TV. For Mike, for Greg, I'm Chico. Thank you ever so much for listening. Please be kind to each other, and we will see you for the next one. Wow! You know, since we met, I saw you on Police Academy, and you were wonderful. It really was some great flick. Thank you. Thank you. you. Thank you, Gene. You know, all this talk about voice talents in the Police Academy episodes. You know what? I'm going to do it. Greg, ring the bell. Oh, oh, I didn't realize we were going to do this. That's the fault of me still recording, but here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Chico Alexander. Is catching in his money in the bank. I'm pretty sure I still have a copy of this. But for my money in the bank, I'm going to declare a fine Funimation production. Chuck E. Cheese in the Galaxy 5000. Oh, no. Well, you know, that means we're going to do it, do it, do it, do whatever you want. And risk your red feet to do whatever you want. Okay, so wait, 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 wait. So this is the Chuck E. Cheese movie from, oh, no, Chico. This is more scarier than Five Nights at Freddy's. Yes, it is. Okay, this is the movie from like 1998? Yeah. Yeah, we talked about this. I don't remember where. Thank you, Chico, for having such a good memory in that regard and actually playing your money in the bank on something that we were.